Hello everyone, welcome back to Visual Literacy Hub. This is Angela. Question, are you obsessed with desserts? Can you still eat something sweet even after a big meal? How much money do you spend per week on desserts and sweets? For me, sweet things are like my best friend and my enemy at the same time. They can make me so happy, but also empty my pocket, give me pimples and make me age faster. Often, I don't walk into dessert place just because I'm actually hungry, but because these beautifully crafted evils just say hello to me whenever I walk past them. Desserts are definitely using a lot of visuals to manipulate your behavior. So today, let's take a look at them from an insider point of view. Welcome to pastry chef Doris, who will be sharing her story with desserts and her thinking about the visual literacy behind cakes. Let's go. Hi everyone, this is Doris. I'm a graduate of La Combo Sydney 2017 and also a graduate of the University of Melbourne Bachelor of Science long time ago. In 2018, I worked as a pastry chef in Intercontinental Hotel Sydney for a year. And the year after, I became the partner of Cakes of One. This year, I won both first and second prize in fondant decorating entries in Sydney Royal Easter Show and was given the title of the most successful exhibitor in novice class. About our little shop, we now specialize in handcrafted cakes, mostly fondant figuring cakes and buttercream drawn cakes. We also do custom cupcakes and cookies for functions. Basically, I have a form for my customer to fill up first, which helps me to understand their needs and help my customer to figure out what they really want. Things like date of event and number of people are the first things to ask as we have to make sure we can take the order on the day and we don't want to waste time for both sides if we can't take it. There are choices that are impacted by all kinds of factors such as gender stereotypes as in like blue for boy, pink for girl, cultural differences such as Eastern people prefer light and less sweet cakes as in general. On the contrary, Western people prefer a strong contrast, something from like fondant cakes or buttercream ganache cake with a strong flavor. There are also certain types of cake only for religious purpose. For example, rice weaning cakes for Nepalese baby, Christian cakes are only for Baptists. With age preference, baby cakes often are in pastel colors. Same could be little animals like teddy bear, elephant, rabbit. Could, um, could also be stars and clouds. Things are cute, sweet and innocent. Cakes for grown up are more with a specific theme. It's kind of interesting as you can sort of see in kids' cakes are the choice of parents. Cakes for grown up are the choice of self. Do you guys remember in Disney cartoon The Sleeping Beauty? There was this giant blue cake fairies made for the princess. One of my customer requested that design for 21st birthday, so I took the challenge. It was an irregular cake and looks like it's falling apart immediately. I spent lots and lots of time thinking about how to secure the whole structure, restoring transportation, and how to work out each part. With large irregular cakes like this, we have to use hot wire to cut. Um, and it's very difficult because you have to cut at different angles. So before that, you have to measure all length, width and depth of the structure correctly. And then you assemble them together. And sometimes I use sandy paper just to smooth the edge, just let it join better. And I even cut the base by an electric saw 
just to get the right size I want because it's not something you can get from cake supply shop. So it was a crazy fun experience. For me, I find it meaningful every time my customers leave a good feedback. Things like it's a lot better than what they expected. It turns out to be my passion to make people happy. Not only to make my customers feel well when they open the cake box, but also enjoy the taste of it. May it be many years later, they still do remember it. Thank you Doris for sharing these ideas with us. Now we know how much thought and effort are put behind the cakes we eat, especially those custom cakes. I also learned from Doris that the success of a custom cake relies on open, effective communication between the customer and the chef. In other words, visual communication is often linked with other forms of communication, such as verbal and written communication. And I also really like Doris' observation on how factors like gender, age, cultural background influence customers' choice. By looking at the type of a cake a person hopes to customize for themselves or for others, they're actually hidden clues about this person and their tastes, values, and assumptions. This could be a unique way to read someone through their choices of cakes, isn't it? I believe that desserts can become pieces of art because they trigger emotion just like any other art. Good dessert design utilizes the same fundamental art elements such as color, form, line, and texture, and follows art principles such as balance, emphasis, movement, and proportion. When all of these are well arranged together, the dessert delivers a powerful emotion, happiness, and satisfaction. The Cake International is the biggest cake show in the world, held annually in the UK. Every year, hundreds and thousands of cake artists gather here and showcase their best work to intrigue and amaze the viewers. It's hard not to put a smile on your face when looking at these cakes. Among all the previous winners, there is one Chinese cake chef, Zhou Yi, the winner of 2017, whose work really represents the boundary of art. This is a cake he made inspired by the character of Chinese hero Mulan. Every tiny detail you can see in this cake is all edible. What really touched me is how he used this cake to showcase his culture and celebrate the spirit Mulan represents. Let's take a minute to appreciate this unbelievable piece of edible art. I sometimes also think about this question. Do cakes really need to be beautiful or should they focus more on the taste? Creating art in the cake show, of course, is a different story. But in terms of everyday cake we can purchase from a cake shop, if I have to choose between look and taste, I'll probably still pick the taste. Because what can be more disappointing than finding out the beautiful cake you paid $80 for tastes only as good as a $5 supermarket cake? Personally, I will remember food that tastes good, and as for those that look fantastic but taste average, they will just stay in my photo album and never get brought up again. I think a good experience of savour should not be sacrificed for the look, so I often wonder if people actually eat the giant and beautiful wedding cake, or are they actually just for the photo taking, which will be a shame, because after all, I hate wasting food. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my random thoughts about cakes and the visual hidden in them. A big thank you to every pastry chef who make this world a better place. Let's also wish Doris all the best for her career as a pastry chef. Doris Cake Shop is called Cake Stop 1 and it's located in Sydney. Check it out if you're around. 
Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. See you in the next episode. Bye!